Well, hi there, and welcome at another episode on TypeScript design patterns. And in this module, we will be discussing the flight weight pattern. Uh, when we look at the definition, it states that it uses sharing to support large numbers of fine-grained objects efficiently. So how does this work? Uh, the classic example is a document, with, uh, which contains, of course, a lot of characters. And uh, even though a complete document can contain, like, hundreds or, or, or thousands of characters, we do not create a new instance of a character for each character we need. So what we have, we have the character A, we have the character B, we have the character C, and so on. And um, these characters are shared. And the only thing that is uh, intrinsic to uh, or extrinsic to those objects is actually the location of the character in the document. So uh, when we look at the even more class diagram, we see the flyweight factory and the flyweight. And the flyweight is actually a interface that is uh, implemented by all uh, flyweight objects that can be reusable, that can be shared. Um, we also have the client and the client actually does not uh, create a new flyweight object itself. It always asks the flyweight factory to return a flyweight. And the flyweight factory can then, if the flyweight object already exists, return the existing flyweight or else create a new flyweight, add that flyweight to the pool of flyweights and then return that new flyweight. So um, uh, it, all, uh, it's important to understand that the flyweight pattern uh, allows for reusing. It is not, however, required to reuse. So uh, here we see a concrete flyweight. In the document example, this would be an A or a B or a C. But you can also have unshared concrete flyweights, which are objects that are returned by the flyweight factory, but are not shared uh, and not reused. So these are created uh, uh, over and over again. Um, a lot of these unshared concrete flyweights, they have some uh, intrinsic state, and those uh, most of the times use a concrete flyweight which is shared to execute its operations and to indeed be more light to the system. So I created an, uh, an example and so let's head over to Visual Studio. And when we look in Visual Studio, you see that I've defined an interface called iWriter. And the iWriter can write content. That's all it does. So then we have uh, enumerator style, block, or and inline. And we have an enumerator color, red, green, and blue. So uh, we then created two concrete flyweights. Uh, sorry, if first of all, I created an abstract flyway, which allows for writing, writing content to the document. And we've created two concrete flyways, the block writer and the inline writer. And a block writer uh, uses a div tag with a specific color and an inline writer writes out a span tag with a specific color. So when we uh, look at the flyweight factory, what it actually does, it creates a flyweight for every uh, style and color we have. So in our case, this would be a maximum of six objects. We could have a block object, which would render a div with uh, uh, the color red, green, or blue. And we could have a inline logic uh, inline uh, writer, which renders a span with the colors red, green, and blue. So there are only six permutations over there. So when we look at the uh, final code in our load, we create new HTML element a hundred times with a specific style and color. When we, however, look at the HTML element in its constructor, it will ask the flyweight factory to get back a writer. And that writer is then used on the write command to write the content of the HTML element. So the only, uh, the intrinsic state of the HTML element is content, and it calls the writer write with its content. So instead of actually having a uh, hundred different writers 
a hundred different block writers and a hundred different inline writers. We generate the writers that we need on the fly and we use those that already exist. So when we look at our code over here, we create a new HTML element with a specific style or color. And this writer, uh, uh, HTML element, will then create this writer. If the writer exists in a factory already, it will reuse the writer. And if it doesn't exist, the factory will create a writer and add it to the pool of writers. So in the end, this causes that even though we have a hundred, uh, hundred of HTML elements, we only have a maximum of six different writers. And that is how the flyweight pattern uh, works. So when we look at the result over here, you see that we just create a, a new style and a color randomly. And we then create a new HTML element with a specific style and color. And instead of creating uh, new writers as well, we ask the factory to create those writers. If they're not existing already or reuse them, when uh, it is indeed available. And that's how the flyweight pattern works.